Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a process control equipment, Athena Controls. It's a temperature controller and it's an old one. In fact, here's what the case looks like. It's been around for a little bit. Uh, looks like, boy, it's really hard to make out. Maybe a model 2000T or a 2060T. Range is 0 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that true? That is true. 0 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That uses a type J thermocouple. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Anyhow, this thing's been around. It's been giving me some fits recently. And so I've already got the case off it, as you can see. Look at all the old school workings in there. Two circuit boards to get this job done. And I'm not seeing a single... Oh, wait, there's one. There's one integrated circuit buried way down in here. One little 8-pin, uh, probably an op amp of some type. Other than that, everything is discrete in this. So let's pop the jacks off the back here and take a look at some of the components in here. So what I'm going to do is uh, do a quick visual inspection and see what's going on. So what happens to this unit is uh, it'll be reading perfectly. And it basically, let, let's just say that I've got this set at 200 and I have a 200 degree product that I'm trying to sense. Well, the needle should be on zero at 200 degrees. And what will happen is sometimes the process will heat up or cool down. So let's say that it's now the process is at 175 degrees. And so the needle should be at minus 25 at that point. And so it should turn on the output based on what I've got my um, narrow or wide band set at. And then I can do a temperature offset as well to do a little bit of calibration on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some leads and we'll get this baby hooked up and we'll see what happens here. So I know someone's gonna ask, how did I make my thermocouple? And it's just two pieces of wire twisted together. Now there's two different types of wire here. One is iron and one is constantin, and it's an alloy. And the way you can tell which is which is the magnet will only stick to the iron lead. And there's no, no drag on that lead whatsoever. So it always wants to favor the iron lead. And so what happens is the two different wire types, they create a voltage depending upon the temperature. And that voltage can be very accurately measured and it's a very constant output, a uh, very linear relationship depending upon the uh, temperature. So this is a type J thermocouple. Anyhow, I just wanted to give you a little info. Okay, so I've got it connected to power back here. And as I bring it around, I look at this. Uh, oh, did you just see that move? So we should be at about 70 to 80 degrees in here right now. And it's showing it to be just above 70 degrees. So let me go back here and I'll put my fingers on the thermocouple. You should see the temperature rise. And it does, telling me there's an offset as I warm it up. So now we're at about 95 degrees and it's cooling down. So I need to investigate why it just went off again. It just went off. I saw the little red light flash up there for just a split second. There, it just came back on. Somewhere in here, it's got a bad connection. So it looks like they've got it set, so anything more than about 12 and a half degrees, it's going to turn on. And they got it set to turn on on the negative right now. We want to want to be heating a product, so if it gets too cold, it's going to bring the temperature up, and it's going to shut it off. It's hard to believe, but in this whole device, there are only five electrolytic capacitors. There are two here, one right there, and then one right down in here, and one right there. So let's get the ESR meter out and take a look at those first. Uh, I don't suspect that's a problem, but I just want to go ahead and give this a quick little refurbishment. So we'll check those. I do see some heat generated over here on the board. Uh, here's the power transformer, and it goes into a, a bridge rectifier and then into one filter capacitor. And then it looks like it comes back into some regulation here. So uh, surprise there's not more capacitors over there. Now where the heat's being generated, that is a 7809. So that's a, a nine volt regulator. Uh, low current, I think these are rated at 100 milliamps max. I don't think this uses much power whatsoever, but nevertheless, uh, we'll go ahead and check those capacitors and see what kind of shape they're in. Now, upon just doing my visual inspection, 
I noticed this lead right here. Kind of hard to see, but it has a ring around it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Look at that. When I press on the transformer, you can actually see it letting go of the circuit board. And so, I know I've mentioned this before. Uh, pay particular attention to large items like this power transformer. It's a pretty good sized item. And uh, as it heats up and cools down, uh, the pins want to expand and contract at a rate that's different than the rest of the transformer and that's different than the solder and the circuit board. And they all fight and eventually uh, something over here loses like that pin. I definitely see a crack around it. So let's get the ESR meter out. Well, unfortunately, I know the lighting is not good in this position, but we've got three capacitors on this side of the board. So let's check those. So 0.6 ohms, 1.5, and 1.5, can't even see the values. I'll probably have to pull them out to check. Let's check the ones on this side of the board as well. 0.4, not even on there, there we go. And four ohms, seems a bit suspicious, although it is a very small capacitor down in there. It's a 10 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. I suspect this is being a problem. I don't think we should be seeing, what do we see, 0.6 ohms? Yeah, 0.6 on what's well, probably a 220 or a 470 microfarad capacitor. That is bad. So um, I'm gonna get the uh, HACO and we'll unsolder these. Okay, so I went ahead and I made some diagrams of where the capacitors are on the signal board and the power supply board. So I'm just gonna take the HACO and zip those out of there real quick. I just can't see this one capacitor because the one that stands up next to it is much taller and the nomenclature is facing the other direction. <laughs> using the 0.8 millimeter tip. Mm, that one hit the ground. The mystery is a 10 at 25. All right, so I've got all five capacitors out. Now we'll go ahead and ESR them, 10 at 25. 2.5 ohms, it's right on the edge of being suspicious. 22 at 25, two ohms, uh, definitely in the bad range, in my book at least, 100 at 35 volts, uh, 0.5 ohms, right on the uh, edge of bad, 330 at 10 volts, 0.4 ohms, definitely in the bad, if a 220 is in the bad, a 330 is. And now the other 10 at 25, three ohms. Every one of these tests bad. I'm just gonna replace them all. So I've got my capacitor assortment here. So we're gonna grab a 330 at 10, two 10s at 25, a 22 at 25, and a 100 at 35. Well, I don't have a 100 at 35, but I've got a 100 at 50. So we'll ESR all those caps. So I'll start here with the 100 at 50. 0.1 ohms, perfect. Next smaller size is the 330 at 10 volts. 0.2 ohms, 0.1. That one's good. Now the little guys, 22 at 25. That reads two ohms. That one's about as good as the other one was. Now a 10 at 25. 1.0 to 1.2 ohms, I like that. The other 10 at 25. One to 1 1.2, that's good. I'm gonna grab another 22 at 25 and see if I can get a better reading. When I went ahead and grabbed two more of them, 1.5 ohms on that one, a little bit better. Eh, 1.5, might be warming them up with my finger. Two ohms. We'll go with the one that read 1.5. Okay, so I've got the capacitors mounted in here. Eh, I've got my big tip on, on here, unfortunately, but it'll all be okay. Now these new capacitors are all rated at 105 Celsius. Uh, the original ones were rated at 85 Celsius. I'm gonna solder them up, then I'm gonna bend the lead straight so there's no torque on the capacitor. This side got a little smashed, but it's all good. So we'll hit the one side. Stand the other side straight up.
Now, let's go ahead and resolder that uh, power transformer that I think has given us most of the problems. Out of the relay contacts. Although this is a solid state relay, so it doesn't have any uh, moving parts. And I see a couple connections over here I just want to touch up at the same time. I believe this is the driver transistor, if I'm not mistaken. And probably a spike diode of some type in here. I think that's just a jumper. This pot is definitely a large item. It's the beginning of a crack around it, maybe not a total crack. We'll go ahead and do both of those pots. That looks good. Do a quick visual on the other side of the board. Another factory set adjustment pot here. Everything else looks pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and throw it back together and see what happens. All right, so I've got it plugged in here. Make sure the red light comes on if we get too far one way or the other. We're not getting it out. There it goes. Must have a little bit of time base to it. So it's showing about 20 degrees right there. Now that might be a result of the capacitors being changed too because before it was showing about 12 and a half degrees. Or it could have been a problem with the uh, solder connections on the band and the offset. So I'm just going to run it down to 25 and I'm just going to very carefully try to flex it. Nope, no movement whatsoever now. Let's heat up the thermocouple. Watch the meter. And it shut off. Let it cool down. There it came back on, heated up, went off. So it did come on about the same point. So it may have just had to charge one of the capacitors as a smoothing effect. So it's coming on about 15 degrees. Yeah, between 15 and 20 degrees. So it looks like it's working absolutely perfectly right now. Even though this thing is many, many years old, kind of hard to see, but the date code on that little IC down in there is 8849. And so what that means is the 49th week of 1988 this was made. The pot in it seems to be absolutely perfect. I don't see any issues with that pot whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's it. If this video has helped you, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. You can follow me on Twitter at norcal715. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.